On the day the towers fell, I know exactly where I was. I was an OCS instructor and we just started uh, day two of our squad training out in the woods. So we had to come in and commander told us what happened. And I had a platoon, I was in charge of a platoon, and when I got back, we briefed our platoons on what just happened. Two of my soldiers, or candidates, had family in the towers. So immediately it affected everyone. Everybody was, didn't know what to do. Everyone was running around, trying to figure out what to do. Fort Benning, that's where I was, was locked down. Um, you saw Bradley's up, you saw Ch um, Bob Wire, Constantino Wire all over the place. Took a year to get in base, got a year to get off post. You know, it was the whole thing. Everybody was, everyone didn't know, but everyone knew we were, we had to retaliate. Something, we weren't just going to take a hit in the face and watch our civilians get murdered. So, uh, at that point, I was, I already went through selection and I was on my way to Special Forces training and it was that next year and then Branch called me from SF, hey guess what, you're, you just got bumped up so you're going to Captain's Career Course. And it was so full down in Fort Benning where I lived that I had to go to Fort Knox. So pack everything up, move up Fort Knox, you know, knock out uh, the Captain's Career Course and then go back to Special Forces training. Upon that, upon graduation from uh, Special Forces training. You know, I was qualified um, detachment commander, so I was brand new, freshest new guy when assigned to Seven Special Forces Group. I was uh, everyone. Everyone there. By the time I got on there, on the team, uh, most have done a tour. Uh, definitely tours in South America, where everything was ramped up as well. But. The feeling that everyone still had, still everyone was still on edge, still had to look around the corners, still had to look down the road to see how things were, and it was, it was, it was a, a still a feeling of uncertainty. The president was doing his thing, um, Department of Defense, you know, they were doing all, what they had to do to make things happen, but there was a shift in feelings and emotions and everything where, where. You trusted people, but you still didn't trust people the same way. And for us, you know, it was still like the, it was the brotherhood, and that's what we needed to do. We needed to go out and do our business, but our business was in uh, that next rotation. The one I was detachment commander on was in Afghanistan. So uh, <clears throat> we were sort of split up where we had a, a large majority of everyone in special forces in Afghanistan and in areas, other areas. But now we were split up between Iraq and Afghanistan, so it's a, a much different area. We were spread a little thin and back to back to back rotations. I knew some guys from other battalions in the 7th group that were on their 7th and 8th back to back rotation. And they're getting a little burnt out. And they, But still, <laughs> you do what you have to do and soldier on and make mission. What you have to do, you always have to make mission. Um, everyone asked me before we went to war and everything, you know, how are you gonna, how are you gonna feel about murdering or, uh, or killing another person? And I was like, well, I don't see it like that. I see it as a chess game. And they made the first move, and that was the wrong move. And now, you know, we send us in. We're going to take care of it, us in the United States. I have a couple friends that were all that were over there before that I went to high school with that were in, they're in SEALs and a couple other guys I went to high school with through in SF uh, went before me so I sort of kind of had a understanding of what we were going to do physically. Mentally I was prepared. Um, if I didn't, if I had a question and I couldn't find the answer on my team I'd go down the hall and talk to another team, but it, you never were alone. You never had to worry about anything when you were with your brothers, ever, ever. And you never had to worry about that. Uh, they're always there for you and pick you up if you're down. No handouts, but hand ups. That's the way it works. 
Uh, Family-wise, I was single, but I still have mom and dad and brother, <clears throat> and a brother. And, you know, they, of course they were worried, but they knew this is what I wanted to do since I was like 12 years old. So I was finally in my game, in my, in my moment, and that's what I needed to do. You can't, you can't, pe can't keep people like that down. You can't keep people in, uh, so oppressed that they can't even see the sunlight. It's not good. And that's exactly what they did when they opened up that can of worms on uh, September, September 11th. It's, it's something that you, you never forget, nor do you want to forget because it can always happen again. And we have to be ready. We have to be trained. We have to be the best of the train. We have to be able to beat them. <laughs>